Canada's defense is at a crossroads. With global tensions rising, is the Gripen fighter jet the answer to their aerial needs, or are they making a critical mistake? We dive deep into the geopolitical chessboard, examining if this potential acquisition is a strategic masterstroke or a disastrous delay that leaves Canada vulnerable. Imagine Canada's airspace unprotected, facing threats from every angle. For years, the debate has raged, what's the right fighter jet? We reveal why the Gripen, often touted as a solution, might actually be too little, too late for Canada's national defense, exposing the hidden complexities and critical timelines involved. Canada's journey to modernize its air force has been anything but smooth. Over decades, the nation has wrestled with delays, political debates, and shifting priorities, leaving its fighter fleet in a precarious state. The story begins with a simple yet pressing reality. The CF-18 Hornets, introduced in the early 1980s, are now aging rapidly. Once the pride of Canada's skies, these jets are struggling to keep pace with the demands of a modern battlefield, dominated by stealth technology, advanced sensors, and supersonic agility. In the early 2000s, the F-35 was considered the natural replacement, but Canada initially rejected it, citing skyrocketing costs, maintenance complexities, and doubts about operational readiness. Yet, with time, changing global threats and pressure from allies prompted a reconsideration of the F-35, showing just how tangled and politically charged the decision had become. Today, the CF-18 fleet is showing its age. Pilots report increasing mechanical issues, reduced sortie rates, and limitations in modern combat scenarios. Every delay in replacement amplifies Canada's vulnerability, leaving the nation at a crossroads. Act decisively now, or risk being left behind in a rapidly evolving aerial warfare landscape. Enter the Saab Gripen EF, a fighter that has quietly turned heads in the global defense community. Its appeal is clear. Cost effectiveness, operational flexibility, and remarkably low maintenance requirements. For a country like Canada, looking for an immediate yet capable solution, the Gripen seems almost tailor-made. Unlike the F-35, which demands enormous budgets and extensive infrastructure upgrades, the Gripen can be quickly integrated into existing bases, offering reliable performance without breaking the bank. Some experts even argue that in certain scenarios, the Gripen can punch above its weight, effectively acting as a fifth-generation equivalent. Thanks to its agile design, advanced avionics, and open architecture, it can adapt to modern combat tactics, network with drones, and carry precision weaponry efficiently. Yet, it's not without limitations. Against true stealth platforms like the F-35, the Gripen's radar signature and electronic warfare capabilities are less advanced. In high-threat, peer-to-peer conflicts, it may struggle to achieve air dominance without support from allies or supplementary systems. This duality, exceptionally practical on one hand, but strategically limited on the other, makes the Gripen a fascinating yet contentious choice for Canada's defense planners. Canada's Air Force decisions don't happen in a vacuum. They're part of a broader geopolitical chessboard. The Arctic, long seen as a remote frontier, has suddenly become a hotspot of strategic importance. With melting ice opening new shipping routes and global powers eyeing the north, Canada's sovereignty is under increasing scrutiny. NORAD modernization adds another layer of urgency, demanding fighters that can respond quickly and reliably to any threat in the far reaches of the Arctic. Meanwhile, the world's major powers are growing more assertive, from near-peer competitors testing advanced air capabilities to unexpected regional flashpoints, the need for credible, ready air defense has never been higher. A delay in upgrading fighter jets isn't just a logistical problem, it's a geopolitical risk that could have real consequences for Canada's national security. So where does the Gripen fit into this complex puzzle? Acquiring it sends a signal. Canada is moving to modernize efficiently and responsibly. But critics warn that its limited stealth and range could be interpreted by some allies as a half-measure, while adversaries might see it as a temporary gap in Canada's defensive posture. 
Every acquisition decision is therefore not just about hardware, it's a statement on the world stage. Even with all its strengths, the Gripen faces a hard reality check, timing. Canada's Air Force is aging fast, and every year of delay erodes its readiness. While the Gripen offers cost-effective and flexible capabilities, questions linger about whether its delivery timeline can meet Canada's urgent defense needs. In a world where aerial threats are evolving rapidly, a jet that arrives too late could be far less impactful than promised. Critics ask, will a fleet of Gripens really shift the balance against potential adversaries in the 2030s? Can it hold its own against the next generation of stealth aircraft and hypersonic threats? Or will Canada be forced to rely on allies for air cover while its own jets play catch-up? And then there's the opportunity cost. Every year spent in debate or waiting on contracts is a year lost in upgrading infrastructure, training pilots, and developing integrated defense systems. For a nation balancing budgets and geopolitics, these delays aren't just bureaucratic, they're strategic vulnerabilities that could define Canada's aerial posture for decades. The decision Canada makes today about its fighter fleet will echo for decades. Beyond the immediate capabilities of the aircraft itself, there's the broader question. How will this shape Canada's defense posture and its credibility on the international stage? A well-timed, strategically chosen fighter acquisition can reinforce alliances, deter adversaries, and signal that Canada is a serious player in modern aerial defense. But the jets alone aren't enough. Investing in pilots, advanced training, and robust support infrastructure is equally critical. A modern fighter fleet without a fully prepared human and logistical backbone is like owning a luxury sports car without fuel or a trained driver. It can't deliver on its promise. And finally, alternatives must be considered. If the grip and path proves suboptimal, Due to timing, capabilities, or geopolitical signaling, Canada may need to explore supplementary or alternative options, from mixed fleets to collaborative programs with allies. The key will be balancing speed, cost, and strategic impact, ensuring that whichever path is chosen strengthens Canada's defense rather than leaving it vulnerable to future surprises. Canada's fighter jet decision isn't just about planes, it's about preparedness, sovereignty, and the message it sends to the world. Whether the gripping will rise to the challenge or arrive too little, too late, only time will tell. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Canada's defense dilemma, hit that like button, subscribe to Viper Jet Wings for more exclusive analyses, and let us know in the comments. Do you think Canada made the right choice or is a bigger, bolder plan needed?